I'm going to take you through an activity that hopefully you can integrate into your program. It's actually a strategy um, of how we're going to integrate an arts approach into uh, literacy using, um, using music in this instance. So, a little bit of brainstorming, just very briefly turn to your elbow partner and look at these questions here and pick one and then talk about that one question for about 30 seconds and then we'll get, uh, get some feedback on your thoughts. The, 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 the comment was the students feel safe to, ans to answer and ask any question. There is no wrong answer and there's no wrong question. Thank you. Anything else? That's right. Creating, we were talking earlier in another one of the presentations about creating um, a, a, a learning community. And we want to build that in our classrooms, particularly in a, in a, in a second language acquisition context where same thing as with English as a second language. We don't want the students to feel devalued and they're doing very basic kind of low-level blooms memorization work. You want to take them above, uh, above and beyond that and do some more critical thinking. Anything else? honoring different learning profiles and differentiating. So this safe environment allows for all students to be successful and valued. So these are just very briefly, I won't read them, but these are just sample curriculum expectations in music that this strategy will address from, uh, the, from the, the revised arts curriculum. And we also have a revised uh, FSL curriculum, which is, is a lot different and a lot more um, um, holistic in the sense that it's not a checklist of everything the kids have to know. So these are some of the expectations that hopefully we're going to actually do this activity. So uh, I'm just going to move forward. So we're going to explore sounds in a text. Because not everybody teaches French, I picked an English text. You can substitute any text you want. It could be fiction. It could be nonfiction. It could be French. It could be English. It could be another language that you're teaching. So this is what we're going to be going through. We're going to model the reading of a text. I didn't bring the book with me, but I have it in, in our classroom there if you want to take a look at it later. It's called Imagine a Day by Sarah L. Thompson. We're going to get into some collaborative thinking. These are grade three kids I worked with on this recently, so I know they, they enjoyed it. And they did really well. We're going to explore some sounds. We don't have instruments here, but we're going to use our creativity and use our vocal sounds, we're going to use some body percussion, we're going to use some, uh, some found sounds, and I'll explain that a little later. And we're, we have the kids experimenting with sounds, and we're going to have a choral reading of this, this text uh, after we're done. And then the other thing that we're going to add to it is instead of just creating our sounds, we're going to find a way to notate our sounds, because we'll be creating in either first language or second language context, we're going to be creating a visual representation of sound. So you can integrate your music expectations with your language expectations. We're going to have kids thinking of themselves as composers and creators. So creating, we talked about this earlier, we want kids to be creative. And creativity doesn't mean creating something from scratch. It means maybe lifting words off the page and making them your own. Kids will be making connections with what they already know as a starting point for further learning. Reading the text, discuss with somebody next to you, with an elbow partner, which words can you pull out of this text that would, you can create a sound with? For example, I might want to create Let's go back to uh, a previous slide just to show you what there. What this student here is doing, he's drawing a squiggly line for one of the words. This was a different text, and I can't remember what the word or the phrase was. But if you look at that squiggly line he's drawing, his sound could be something like That would be the sound to evoke the word. So here we go. 
Notice how I took a risk there and did something totally silly. I want you to feel free to do that. So, oh, there we go. So read the text. You can come up with a partner or by yourself. Once you find your word, we're going to put them down on that chart paper. So write, write your word big enough and draw a visual representation of the sound that would evoke what that word means to you or how you think the author intends that word to come across. So for example, imagine might be, I don't know, something like, that might be imagine for me. For you, it might be something different. So take about, I don't know, a couple of minutes, because we're short on time. Find one or two words, and then if you, when you're ready, come on up and draw them. Write your word and draw the visual representation of what you think that word would sound like on that chart. So when you can dive down through the branches is here. <laughs> Swim up to the sun is here. Do we have build a bridge anywhere? No, we don't have that one. We have um, when you wish is float on a puff of air over there. Pardon me? This is a dive one. Another puff of air and then the dive. Okay, so when those words come up, let's see, can we have the authors of these uh, demonstrate their sounds? What would, when you can dive, what would that sound like? Okay, we're all going to do that together. When you can dive. Really cool. Uh, when your house unfolds you like a nest, Rocking, I think that's a, a, a sound we're going to do for rocking, which is, who did that one? What was your idea? How about, like, uh, yeah. Okay, I like that. Let's all do that. Ready, and. Nice. Uh, and when your house in, uh, gently in the autumn wind, what does what an autumn wind sound like? Perfect. Everybody together. And and swim up to the sun. That's really good. Can we all do that? Maybe make a motion. A motion too. Ready? And and uh, puff. There's two puffs of air. Can we combine the two? What was the first puff of air there? No, you just, you just hold on to it. What's the, the first puff of air? Who wrote that one? What would that sound like? Nice. Let's everybody go. And the second puff of air? Well, we... <laughs> Why don't this half do... And this one do... Ready? And... That's a beautiful puff. <laughs> Dive down through the branches. Okay, so let's all do that together and. Okay, I think we have, we're ready for our choral story. So let's read it together. When we find, we stop at a word that we've made a sound for, we're going to um, all make that sound uh, I'm just, I'll be the conductor, but I would probably get another student to be the conductor, but just for time's sake, I'll do it. Okay, so here we go. Ready, and. Ready, and a little more enthusiastically. Ready, and. Oh, wait a minute. Down through the branches. And continue.
stop here and and continue And there you have it, your spring concert performance. Very well done. Thank you. That, that's just a, a very quick, because you're all level four, we did many steps together. But this will take you several um, periods, I guess, or several um, sessions where you will model. And the modeling and sharing is so important, especially with the second language text. So, the next step for this would be, um, you would, I would give you the rest of the story in small groups, and each group would use sounds to create the continuation of the story. And then we would perform it all together. So, the nice thing about a, a, an activity like this is that there is no wrong answer. Everything is safe. But what is another thing that we learned how to do with what we did here with our notation. You can, you can, verbs, you can isolate parts of a grammatical structure. And you can maybe tell the students, for each action, you need to make a sound. And you can, it depends on what your learning goal is. So that's one thing. Anything else? It, because the kids don't realize that they're building vocabulary. Hopefully, they're having fun. I hope you had fun, because it was fun to listen to it. Anything else? What about music? When you see a, um, a, a score, and you know, traditionally, we, we teach kids, this is a score, and this is how you read the notes, and this is what the composer wrote, so now play it or sing it. But this way, they're introduced to why do composers write down music? Well, they write it down so somebody else can play it. Why does an author write something a certain way so that somebody else can read it? So it's an introduction to musical notation. It's very, um, it, it's not traditional notation, but it gives kids the sense that composers notate so other people can perform their work. Same, same way that authors write so that we can uh, learn about their experiences and then make connections to our own experience. So that's another interesting thing that would come out of an activity like this. So if you have musical instruments in your classroom, perfect. You can put those out too, and the kids can experiment with it as, as those grade three kids did in those, uh, those photos. So these are just some shots of, of teachers working on this same activity with you know, the, the, the luxury of more time and working together as a group. This is something from, from Ann Davies about assessment. And assessment is gathering the evidence of learning. And so, so much of our evidence is always geared towards the final product. But we have to remember that assessment is also observation and conversations, and not just the products. So as the kids are working, you would ask them questions like, why did you choose this sound? So these are some of the inquiry questions that you can ask the children as they're working, or even after their, their, their work is done. Why did you choose the sounds you did to represent your words? Did anyone's choices surprise you? So if I can ask somebody who wrote one of those, why did you choose that? So I, I won't single out anybody. Why did you choose the sound that you did and notate it the way that you did? So if we had more time, we'd go into the curriculum, either in the arts, in FSL, or in English, and find out the scope and sequence of skills that the children are developing. So we talked about vocabulary acquisition, um, grammatical structures, we talked about musical notation. There could be so many other things that by exploring the curriculum, you know what your goals are. You can pick an appropriate text, and you can get the kids involved 
you're hitting their musical intelligence, which so often we tend to ignore the kids who have this musical intelligence who are not visual but oral, and they want to create um, something musical other than composing something from scratch, which is very hard to do, but this gives them a safe entry point. And I think we talked about the uh, evidence of learning, and I think that's it. I think my time's up. So thank you very much for participating.